Well, I got lots and lots to say today, so I'll be busy, busy today. Um, this particular video um, is in relationship to a conversation I had with this guy that's doing some healing in the name of Jesus. And what, what happened to me is I lost my eyesight um, when I was about five or six years old just poof went in one day no real event happened other than the hell that I was living in with my parents beating me and you know saying they love me and you know religion was teaching them to beat me the medical world was teaching them to beat me and I'm experiencing my eyesight starting to go while I'm experiencing all of this and it just went in one friggin day and nobody was listening to me it took about uh, a month for people to actually believe and hear me so it's like okay what was the purpose of me losing my eyesight because it went like from really perfect to legally blind without glasses and everybody you know again did not listen to anything I had to say but yet I couldn't, you know, I'm in school, can't see the freaking blackboard because you're blind and nobody's listening to me when I say I can't see the freaking blackboard. Why is it people have such a hard time listening to what other people have to say? It's kind of the big point here because we all don't believe we have something to say. It's usually people that are being harmed by other people when you say stop, you know, don't, it kind of hurts me. We don't tend to listen to that. When you ask for help, we don't tend to listen to how we need help. We push our concepts and ideas of how you should get help. So what's the purpose of, uh, you know, me losing my eyesight? And it's like, okay, asking God, what is the answer? And basically, the voice that I hear, you know, the God that I'm listening to, you know, when I ask for God for answers and he gives me back an answer, um, he definitely told me that this was so you could see better. <laughs> and it's like, okay, makes sense out of that. Why would God take my eyesight away for me to see better? And if, you know, it's only through age and experience that you can kind of make some sense out of what God's trying to say to you. Now, when you lose your eyesight, your hearing gets better. You know, you have several different senses that go on, you know, and when one sense goes another one has to get stronger so it was more like okay I was listening and it's it's not so much I, I I suppose that was the the trap is I was listening to everybody else and stopped listening to myself and to what God was trying to tell me and it's like okay God why is all of this happening why am I listening now and following everybody else's wrong path and then the answer again comes back and it's like, so you won't be stuck in the drama. You won't be stuck in the stories, the arguments, the wars, the reasons why, you know, we're doing the things we're doing. But look at the bigger picture, the fruit of what everybody's doing, you know, because when your eyesight goes, you, you're stuck looking at, okay, a bigger picture of things. When you're stuck with perfect eyesight, you see every friggin' germ in your house, you know, and then you're going to be a hypochondriac because, oh, these germs are going to kill me. And it's like, okay, when you can't see that well, you can't see all of the small little germs that are going to make you sick. You don't tend to get hypochondriac about it. Someone's like, you want to see germs in my house? There probably is because I can't be spotlessly clean because I can't even see the friggin' mess. <laughs> you know, like, I can see the obvious things, but, you know, and then kind of look at, at some experiences from not seeing the smallness of it. Nobody in my family was getting sick. I never got a cold or a flu. Yet all of these germs that'll kill you, you'll get a flu and are cold. So kind of like, oh, I get it, God. You know, if I pay too much attention to the smallness, I won't understand the bigness, the fruit of, of the actions. But you do have to go into the smallness to see what's causing everything. So, um, definitely no you can be healed from anything there's no question about that there there's science that i've been using to heal myself um 
to heal my eyes, though it's like, okay, God, heal my eyes. And the messages I get back is, no, there's somebody else that you need to cross paths with that will heal your eyes for you. And the concept is uh, that all of us are individual. All of us have a unique purpose. We're not all the same, you know, and that's why I can't know the answer to everything because we need to connect with everybody else that happens to know a piece of the puzzle. So that's why I'm kind of not a leader, you know, some people lead, you know, but then they need to be taken over just like a flock of birds. You know, if you kind of look at how birds go, you know, one is always at the, the front of the pack leading all the birds, you know, but what happens is, is the, the lead bird always falls back and it's replaced with another bird. So it's like you're all in sync together harmoniously leading you know all birds into the right path there's never one leader you know although it appears like there's one leader there never is it's one leads and then another takes over and another takes over but you all have to be on the same path you all have to be of one mind now just like a heart cell has the purpose to be a heart and a lung cell needs to have you know the purpose to be a lung cell you know, there are healers on this planet. You know, that is their purpose. That is their mission, you know, is to be out there and, and show. But the example is out there for you to see that we are all healers. We all can heal, but heal in our specific talents. Getting to my point is there's this guy that has some YouTube videos. I'll post his channel and his name. Who's going around doing a lot of healing and posting it on YouTube. So I said, okay, great. And, and he's doing it in Jesus' name. So it's like, oh, great. You know, let's see if he can heal my eyes. Let's see if he's in the same path as God, you know, the God that I listen to. And, um, you know, see if he can heal my eyes. Because that's kind of the message that I'm getting from the God that I listen to is, you know, when when the right healer shows up, you'll know. And, um, okay, so I've asked this guy, okay, can you heal my eyes? You know, and it's like, wow, I'd be really, you know, like, we'd really be knowing more about Jesus if, if because I got a big mouth, you know, and kind of on a mission to kind of introduce a lot of information, you know, so if this was to happen to me, holy shit, you know, like, my eyes were healed, you know, and healed by Jesus, you know, but miraculously, this guy can't heal me because I don't have the same beliefs as him. And what are the beliefs that separate us? And, and this is the biggest trick. It's, and if you can see the bigness, you can see the patterns and you can see the same patterns that lead us all down a freaking path to death. And, you know, does God want you dead? You know, that does God want sort of an eternal life? you know, why are we all dying? You know, even the friggin' Bible, they were living 900 years, you know, so aging is something that, hey, kind of question why we're aging, if they all live to be 900 years at least, and why are we all dying so young? Well, this guy is, is saying, no, you need to die. <laughs> and it's like, and all of these people that are very, very religious that work through, you know, God and, and, and Jesus, you know, they don't think for themselves. You know, they don't think that God is inside them and they can listen to God and God's going to point you in the right direction. No, we can never trust ourselves. You know, the only thing we can trust, the only thing that we need to listen to is a book. It's a book. God is in a book. You know, so you, you can't have your own life experiences. You can't, you know, use the Holy Spirit that's inside you to help guide you. No, you always got to reference a friggin' book. And my whole point is, is didn't Satan infiltrate our churches? Aren't our priests having sex with kids? You know, we kind of thought, oh, there's no way Satan will go into our churches. You know, our churches are too powerful. <laughs> These priests are having sex with our kids. So Satan definitely walked through the doors of our church that ain't scaring God, uh, Jesus or uh, Satan. So do you think, do you think even for a second that Jesus can manipulate a Bible? You know, that book that you worship, the one that is your perfect guidebook that's going to guide every single one of your moves is in a book. Do you always have to reference a book? And it's just amazing that every disagreement that anybody has with me in my relationship to God just happens to be about death. 
everybody that's believing that book seems to think we need to die. And they got all of these quotes that say you need to die. And apparently this guy gave me a quote that says you're only supposed to live 120 years. <laughs> You know, did Jesus go around and say, hey, you're only supposed to live 120 years? Did he go around telling everybody, hey, you're only going to live 120 years? Suck it up. Why are we dying? Mm. Jesus kind of said, your sins are going to kill you. If, if, if your sin doesn't kill you, your sins are going to kill somebody else. So the only reason we're dying is because of our sins. Kind of the message of Jesus. Kind of said, you know, don't be sinning. Kind of a wrong thing to do. Um... Jesus did not die on a cross so you can sin. You know, you know, repentance is not about, oh, you believe Jesus is there because you can sin all you want. Just ask for forgiveness and believe that he's there. And then miraculously, that's repentance. It's like, yeah, right. Like, no, repentance means if you make a mistake, you got to correct your own friggin' mistake. If you put bad into the world, you got to put, you got to fix that badness that you put in it and put something good back in there. You know, it's not believing some guys out there that's just going to say, oh, you know, that's like giving flowers after you abuse somebody. You know, oh, I'm sorry, here's some flowers, I'll never do it again. Yet you repeat the same freaking pattern over and over again. You know, you got to fix what you did wrong. You know, you got to kind of repent. You got to sort of change your actions. You got to sort of change your beliefs and, you know, your patterns. Now, to get to this pattern, it's like, look at Deepak Chopra, you know, medical guy, kind of has a health center and yet writing a book about how to accept death he meditates on his own freaking death and wrote a book about it and says we all need to accept death does that make any sense to heal you just so you can die is this guy gonna just save me you know fix my eyesight just so I can die you know is he gonna fix a heart attack just so I can die you know isn't the medical world saying hey just take this pill and you'll be better yet that pill will kill you in a whole pile of different ways but let's not talk about that it's just a little pill you know, to block what you're focused on right now. But as soon as you make that problem a little better and don't be scared of all the other problems it's going to cause you. So take that pill. So those are the patterns that I see with these healers. We can see it in our medical forms that it'll guide you down the path to death. We can see it in these spiritual healers like Deepak Chopra who, you know, has a health center but yet preaches about accepting your own freaking death. Meditate on your death. You know, and then we see these guys, you know, like this guy, I'm posting his link that he's going to heal you and say it's Jesus healing you. But in order for you to be healed, you got to accept that I'm going to kill you. You know, like you got to die somehow. All humans have got to die. So miraculously, he's not healing my eyesight. You know, he's going to try and convince me that, you know, I'm, I'm believing in the wrong God. You know, I got to go back to the book and worship the book because the book is all right. And yet that book is telling you to beat your kids. Something's wrong with that. What do you think? Peace out.